In today's episode, I'm going to be pointing a telescope at this man, Sir David Attenborough. Now, it's not as creepy as it sounds. In recent videos, I've been converting your names into numbers that create corresponding coordinates to a region in our night sky. I've then been pointing some very expensive telescopes located across our planet at these regions and revealing the secrets that lie within. Now, for 90% of these cases, what turns up is basically nothing just a few stars. That's not to say it's boring, but relatively there's emptiness everywhere you look in our night sky. But there have been a few names that have revealed some incredible wonders. And I'm very happy to report that after imaging the particular region that corresponds to this gentleman's name, I have captured an incredible beauty indeed. The final image produced was so incredible, I'm going to enter it into this year's Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. So in this episode, I'm going to explain why him, what's located within this mysterious image, and also whether or not I think this image truly has what it takes to win this year's competition. I'm Damon Scotting and this is Astronomical. Now before I invest hours into imaging this region, I'm first going to do a bit of research. I need six numbers and therefore six letters. Each letter equals its numbered position in the alphabet. A is 1, B is 2, C is 3 and so on. You truly can come across anything when inputting random coordinates but in the majority of instances, you're most likely to come across nothing. But it's suffice to say that this time we've hit the jackpot. Located in the left center of our field of view, we have NGC 488, a face on spiral galaxy. And to make things a little more interesting, we have this gorgeous contrasting blue star located to the left of it, shining with a similar magnitude to the galaxy. When looking for entries into this competition, some of the boxes you'd hope to tick are that you are imaging a target relatively unknown. That is to say, you won't be competing with 2,000 other entries of the Orion Nebula. You also want your image to have something a little unique about it. This bright blue star alongside the, the galaxy does not only complement its colours, but it reminds us of some galactic context. Here we have a star that seems to be practically outshining an entire galaxy, which itself is composed of hundreds of billions of stars. Now unfortunately, imaging in the UK means that this target is particularly hard to image, especially at this time of the year. So the alternative to using your own back garden setup is to use one located halfway around the planet in a much more pristine location. That is to say, where the skies are a lot less polluted, and better yet, the equipment is a hundred times better. This is the rig I'm going to be using to capture this image. In order to use this telescope, I'm using the Surface Telescope Live. They provide you with access to these remote telescope setups. And this one is, to put it lightly, a beast. It's a 24 inch telescope, capable of capturing even the faintest galaxies in our night sky. Now you may be wondering, why Sir David Attenborough? Why not someone that's more fitting to the hobby? Why not Edwin Hubble? Why not William Herschel, Galileo, Isaac Newton? Why him? Well, I think it goes without saying that out of all the people in history, this man has had the biggest impact on my life personally and above all else, the production of these videos and this channel. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be sat here in front of this camera talking to you right now. I wouldn't be in a position where I'm able to point these really expensive and huge telescopes anywhere I wish in the entire night sky. The only reason I can do that is because I've gained a lot of inspiration from this gentleman behind me. From interviews, I've seen that he doesn't really take too much interest in space. And his justification for that is the fact that there's so much still left for us to explore here on the planet, including the depths of the oceans. And that's quite a nice parallel between exploring space as something that you have here that's more local. Like some of the creatures that you find in the depths of the ocean are quite alien-like indeed. But yeah, I still thought he might find it interesting. Um, this wasn't going to be my first time writing to him either. The first time I wrote to him was about 10 years ago, and that's when I was seeking inspiration on how to be a good presenter. It does feel a bit weird owing a lot of what you've become in life to a person you've never met. But during my most formative years as an adult, as a real human being, it's his literature and media publications that have sculpted a lot about the person that I want to be. The world should be exciting because it is exciting. This is the goal to be the presenter of a topic that I'm extremely passionate about. And there is nothing in life that I'm more passionate about than the ability to image the universe in motion, to capture previously unimaginable cosmic wonders from my back garden. To peek behind the curtain that our ancestors have marveled at for millennia is an ability that is so profound and thrilling that I'm obsessed with the idea of sharing it with others. Because if looking at space isn't the coolest on the entire planet, I don't know what is. Right, enough blabbering on, it's time to finally reveal the image. This is NGC 488, or as I will from now on refer to it as Attenborough's Galaxy.
Although it's the gorgeous galaxy that is supposed to be the main focus of this image, it's the tiny background galaxies that steal the show. Thanks to the help of this powerful remote telescope, I have revealed visible structural details of galaxies that were previously a blurry mess. This image is a galactic family portrait. The edge on stance of NGC 488 gives it this stark depth, appearing almost as though it were a mysterious portal awaiting voyagers to travel through, granting them access to a universe hitherto unknown. But it's not. At its core is a supermassive black hole that's destroying stars in their thousands. But it certainly does encourage your imagination to run wild. The digitized sky survey provides a detailed look of the region, but it's clear to see that my image has revealed more of the universe than was previously known to the naked eye. It's not improved it by much, but an improvement nonetheless. Now because of this episode, I've really started to get a taste for using these incredibly powerful remote telescopes. And there are a lot of things in our night sky that I can't image from here in the Northern Hemisphere because they're only visible from regions located further south. So for the next episode of this series, I'm going to go off in search of some of the monsters of our universe. I'm going to capture them in terrifying detail. All right, bugging me, I'm starting to run out of space now because this is another entry into the galaxies category. And as you can see, not got much room. I am going to need a bigger board. <laughs> All right, see you next week. Thanks for watching. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical.